welcome to another episode of the Digital Embellishment Show. I am so happy to have a superstar among us today. I'd like to welcome Jeff Alexander from Alexander's. How are you, Jeff? Great, Kevin. Thank you very much. Great. So, so Jeff, you have you have quite a story in the print industry. I know that you started Alexander's in 1979 as a multi-location copy shop, and now you've grown it into a global 150 employee global print and fulfillment center and and you are actually one of the first ones i know you and i go back to really digital embellishments in the market tell us a little bit about alexander's and 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 and, and that beautiful trajectory that you've taken this company over the past 40 plus years yes we started out as a retail copy center and then in the mid 90s we began to really evolve into more commercial print. And by the end of the, well, beginning of the 2000s, we were focused a lot on, on, uh, on technology. And we, we've had a tech team so for over 20 years. Until today, we're just deep into commercial print, but using, we look for companies who can hook into our API so that we can receive their product. And so these are companies that are have their own websites or apps and they're taking orders. Uh, and then sending that straight to us so that we can print and then fulfill for them. It, it, we, we found some really specialized markets. We print a lot of books. We do a lot of greeting cards and envelopes, just a variety of different products. But the books especially are one off and, and that's become a specialty for us. And we, we use a lot of the digital embellishment. Yeah. It, it's become a major part of what we can offer to our customers. Wow. So tell me about that. Did you offer embellishment before you went digital? Was it something that your heart just said, I feel that there's something here? Tell me, walk me kind of through your your decision-making process to say, okay, I'm going to get into this like an early, early, early adopter. And I think there's something here. Talk, walk us kind of so through. What, in the very know. beginning, and in fact, about six months before we made a decision to, to buy our first press, somebody had come by trying to sell to us and we just flat out said, no, we just wasn't interested. And then we went to one of the print shows and I had a greater chance to look at it and really get a feel for it. And I just had this really a gut feeling that something could happen here. And that's when we first met you and we talked it through quite a bit and felt that we could create a market. And th this was a market that, and at that time we weren't uh, doing a lot online. We were just beginning that process. So we worked in a significant way with local designers, teaching them how to design, to use digital varnish and foil. And it took us a while to get their attention. We had a lot of open houses. We, we were just out there meeting with anybody we could and making our own, a lot of our own samples so that they could get a feel for what it was. And that's what really began to kick this off and make it. We would bring people in and ask them to send us files ahead of time so that we could prep them and show them how it could work. I remember one of our big journal companies, we did a lot of different cover options for them so that they could see what, even if it was just the varnish on that page, what it could look like, but many times it was trying to help them design using the foil. And over time, I, it really took us six to nine months to develop a really solid business in that area. And one of the biggest openings we had was helping a, an invitation customer be able to add foil on an invitation and customize it hmm. to that, that their customer. And that was a big deal. And that's a really popped open the market for us. Wow, that's wonderful. So I'm hearing a lot of really smart business moves that went into this decision of obviously as an entrepreneur, you have to follow your gut. You feel that there's something there, you see the vision, but then you had to go out and create a market for yourself. And, and, the, and from what I'm gathering and what you're saying and what I've seen is a lot of that market creation comes down to two things. Number one is education. So educating not just your brands or your clients, but educating those who design for your brands and clients, which I think is a very smart move. But also, I think the second really important thing is you, you touched a little bit about samples. How important is it to get the final product in somebody's hand compared to maybe sending them a picture or, or something like that? Tell me, tell me kind of go, well, what goes through that. And you know this as well as I do in, in this because your name really, yeah. really covers it. <laughs> And we even branded a name for ourselves called Textured. Yep. And, and 
they had to feel it. If we could get this in somebody's hand, they wouldn't set it down. They were just holding that, feeling it. And so samples were, we couldn't have done it without samples. You could talk about it all day long, but until they see it and they understand what it could do to their design, it made it, you couldn't change their mind. And, and in fact, they'd say, I'd rather have traditional foil. It looks so much nicer. And once we could get this in their hands, they saw how crisp it looked, uh, how nice it was. And they began to realize, whoa, you, you can do customized work. So personalize it. So if it's a, an invitation going to people for say an open house, you could, you could personalize it to the person that's receiving the invitation in foil. And it, it was just a hit. It, it made a huge difference to people. They had to be able to feel it. Sure. And, but you guys were smart because you've invested in it since day one. Like that's really, I think, I, I don't see you as a printer necessarily. I see you guys as an it company that does printing in a way. And I don't know if that's the right way to describe you, but I know how much the it infrastructure is the backbone uh, for getting this out. And I think that, first of all, is that, is that accurate? Was that, yeah. that yeah. Yeah. That's yeah we cool. see ourselves as a manufacturing company. It, it's not just print We're we're manufacturing. Yep. And we have a certain product that, that we manufacture. Yeah. And, and then now we've just gotten the processes and the equipment to go around it. I, so 10, 15 years ago, we still had to have a total expertise in the print industry because people were specking jobs and bringing them to us. Now that's not as much the case because we've, we've driven to a certain type of product we like to do. And we'll adjust that from time to time as we see new opportunities but it's really teaching our employees how to build those products. Yeah. And I think it's important because unfortunately, you know, a lot of the, the companies that we do work with or consulting with have these, these types of technologies, digital embellishment technologies, and are not taking advantage of the variable aspect. Like you were just saying, being able to put somebody's name on an invite or on an agenda or, or, or something of that nature. And, and I think maybe that is that is probably the, the one biggest, I think, uh, issue that a lot of printers have is understanding how to manage the data correctly to be able to manage these kinds of things. But you guys really are doing a great job on that. Tell me, what kind of markets are you starting to see evolve right now from your work you're doing? Because I know you have specific market segments that you go after, but is there anything? What's hot right now? What's what are you what are you really seeing? Well, and, and it, we may not even be in the sweet spot of that anymore, but in, in ours, we, we'll customize, like I said, invitations, greeting cards, book covers. We're, we're even, you know, experimenting with, could you create a foil, uh, adding foil to a photo book all the way through it. It's going to be a little tougher and everything like that, but there's opportunities. We've done a lot of boxes. These yep. boxes are a real hit for people. One of like our the fulfillment folks, fulfillment boxes, like the the merch boxes or the the welcome aboard boxes, or well, some things like that. Well, for instance, one of the local universities, we work closely with their athletic department, and it may not. Sometimes it might be recruiting. Other times, it's um, it, it might be fundraising. But they'll personalize a box, fill it with some gear, and send it out. And and we use the foil on that a lot so that it stands out totally personalized to that person that it's going to season ticket holders, the, the, the ones that are sitting in the, the choice of seats, they may get a fancy box with their tickets in it or information about how to access their tickets online. That's changed over the years too. But being able to use it in those ways, it, it shows that big donor that they mean a lot to the university. And, and so it, yeah, you can have a lot of fun with those kind of things. I, I, oh yeah, that's probably one of the hottest things that have heated up. It started, like you said, a lot of in the recruitment, the football, basketball programs. Then it started migrating towards admissions. And then it started going into, into different areas, like with the alumni. So this is a great market that uh, we're definitely seeing a lot of, of embellishment, specifically digital embellishment, because I think people understand the impact of the value. You know, it's, it's worth that extra couple of, sense or whatever it is to be able to get that impact across when you open that in the mail or, or you get that in a, in a package. Jeff, let me ask you a question. If you had to choose between varnish or foil, which one would you use? <laughs> you could only pick one. But my foil's on varnish, right? Yes, <laughs> so yes, I have a, yes, yes, but you have to I'd, pick one. If you had I'd to pick still, one. I'd still go with the foil because yeah. it, it 
stands out. But I also love the opportunity to add some some varnish on top of that foil, oh, and yeah. and just finish it off. It, it's just gorgeous. Oh, I mean, you, you know, you know what? I've like been that. talking to some users. They're experimenting right now. They're taking a white sheet of paper, putting foil all over the paper. So imagine a bright red foil, soft touch lamb or varnishing on top of the foil, and then dropping varnish with the inkjet on top of it. And the yeah. effect is absolutely phenomenal. I'm we've we've done well. some where we might have five different colors. Well, we might foil first and then print it and then laminate it, and then we'll start adding maybe four, four more colors of foil on top of that to really give it, and then the extra varnish on top of that. Oh, yeah. So that you really just have the, the, the real precise feel to that picture. I mean, we've oh. done some really cool stuff on people's artwork. Oh, I, I they're know. They're selling. They're selling as art pieces, really. Jeff, I've spent two hundred dollars with your company to buy a yeah. piece of art from you. So I mean, I am a one of your your very satisfied customers, and yeah. I'm looking at your piece of art right now as we speak. It's in my office. It's so. fun. It's yeah. really fun. And that's and I think that's what's important that you bring to it is it's uh, it's a challenge, and and you are one of the first ones to do it. So there's a lot of challenges that comes with that. But if you take it with fun and smile and realize what it is that you're doing is. It's actually really cool stuff. Yeah, it is. I think uh, I think that's what what, what kind of gives it that energy to succeed. Okay. Well, listen, Jeff. Last question before we go. If you had one piece of advice for anybody thinking about getting into digital embellishment, what piece of advice would that be? I, I think you've got to you've got to understand that you have to go out and create the market. It will not come to you because people don't understand it. So you have to get out there and like you said earlier, you got to create samples. You've got to be willing to go and just knock on doors and, and, and talk to people about what can happen. And especially if you have a sample of their product already mm -hmm. and maybe take the time to add some of the embellishment to it and then take it to that customer. But, but if you're not willing to do, you know, get outside the box that way, then I wouldn't jump in. Right. It'll be too hard to sell. Yeah, I agree. This, this is, is not one of those things you want to go out and try and compete price-wise. I mean, it is an add-on. It is a value add, and so you've got to sell it in a different way. Yeah, I fully agree. I fully agree. Well, everybody, that's Jeff Alexanders. If you're interested in doing some work with Jeff and his wonderful company, which I highly recommend, check out alexanders.com. And if you're in the Salt Lake City area, you might want to give them a call and drop in and check it out because they definitely have one of the best operations that I've seen. So Jeff, thank you so much for, for everything, uh, not just for today, but for everything that you've done for the digital print industry for the past almost decade or so. I don't think we'd be here without you. Uh, I think you're one of the true pioneers. And for that, I'll always be grateful for you. Uh, thank you very much. Kind of you to say, but we love it. It's been fun. All right. Thank you.